So this is the outline we're building today. You could use this on a real estate video or a construction video or you know any video really that you're trying to draw the viewer's eye to a particular location. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so here I have my quote unquote client's video that we're gonna be working with today. And they pretty much told me that they want a parking lot right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to outline it and then it'll draw the eyes to whoever they're pitching this idea to, hypothetically. And yeah, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to determine where you want in your clip, you want the animation to be. If you're gonna have it over the whole clip, that's fine, but I would recommend that you limit what you take over to Fusion to only what you want to have this animation on. Just makes it a, a lot easier when it comes to uh, actually having stuff in Fusion with tracking times and different things like that and not having such a heavy workload. So this whole video is pretty much going to be in the project, but I just want this end part here to be in it. So I'm just going to, let's say, cut it here. Just gonna grab the razor tool. We're gonna to make a little cut there. And then I'm gonna come up and let's say that's where I want it to finally be um, out of the picture. So looking at this, we have about six seconds here. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to actually turn this into a fusion clip because currently we're going to, well, we're gonna be exporting this to the client, client uh, to at 1080. And I don't really need to be working with a 4K clip in Fusion. The other thing too, is because we're in the middle of a clip, um, if we were going to Fusion, let's actually go over so I can show you this. We're actually going to have an in and out point. As you can see here, uh, this is the whole clip and we have an in and out point here, right? That's where our cuts are. Um, and because I'm just gonna be working on just this little portion, uh, to make it easy, we're just gonna start at frame zero and then go to wherever this ends. The other thing too, is you can see that this is a 4K clip. Uh, the current reason the reason why it's currently cropped in and that's just a setting within DaVinci, uh, but we, we wanna be in a 1080 uh, timeline. So we're gonna come over to uh, the edit page and we're gonna just right click new fusion clip. Now that we did that, all it did is it just made a compound clip. So if I was to come over here, open up timeline, uh, come into here, whoops, come down to here, open in timeline. We can see that this is an, just another timeline. So it takes one timeline. It takes, okay, what is your timeline settings, which is ours 1080. It then passes through here and it spits it onto our, oh gosh, it spits it onto our main timeline at 1080. So it'll come over to here at 1080. So now we're going into Fusion. Now that we're in Fusion, you can see up here we have 1080, 1920, and we can see that we start at frame zero and we go to 221. Okay, so now what I need to do is we're gonna make a little bit of space here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our media in, we're gonna hit shift spacebar, and the first node we're gonna grab is our tracker. So we grab the tracker, and because we were clicked on the media in, and then we selected the tool, it automatically connected it for us, as you can see there. The next tool, select clicked on the tracker the next tool we're going to hit shift space bar we're going to grab a paint tool and now we have the paint tool we're just going to take our playhead and make sure that we're at frame zero and within our paint tool we can come up to this little squiggly line which is a polyline and we're just going to click on that and then click however many points i would say not too many because each one has to be an individual tracker for the way in which we're gonna do this. So for this one, I'm just gonna do four and I'm just gonna create a point there, create a point here, create a point here, because that's where our parking lot's gonna be. And for this final one, instead of trying to click on, uh, on the actual box, what you can do is you can come up here and click this button, which will close it. So you're not accidentally adding more uh, points. The next thing we're gonna do is we're just going to highlight that box that we just created and then we're going to hold shift now and highlight it again and as you can see it turned all the points to a gold which now they're all selected doing that we can now hit right click we're going to come down to the polyline and then we're going to come down to publish publish points so now doing that if i click on the actual line 
and then in here we come down into here we now have our points okay and we're going to use these points with the tracking data to move this around to have it make it seem like it's a part of the actual shot so for now i'm just going to go into my tracker and i'm going to drag it up to here so it's the one that i view so i just drag it up when i get up to here i release now we're in here and we can see we have one little tracker so a quick rundown on how the tracker works the inside box here that's going to be your quote unquote pattern or the image you're going to say okay i want whatever's inside this box to be the thing that i track and then this outside box is when it's ready to do the next tracking it's going it only has this area to look for that same pattern that it's seen in the last uh, frame that it tracked so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in more trackers. So here I have four points. So come over to tracker, we're gonna add four points. So here's our four points. Now I need to find things to track. So in the top corner here, we have a little, a little uh, extra square. We're gonna click on that, which then we can move this around. And I'm just gonna go, let's say right here where we have the street and we have the sign. I'm gonna drop it right there for, that's where we want that one to track grab this one here and for this one let's just have a track let's say here this like dark spot and then for this one we're gonna come into right about there so right in there and then for this one we're gonna bring it up oh look there's a black dot so that's kind of like contrasty so how these work is like I said it uses this as as the pattern to track but you can also track specific things within that pattern. So in an image, you have luminance values, how bright something is or how dark something is. That's how it is set up by default. The other way you can track is by the color in an image. So you can do the, all of the color or you can select specific color channels to track. Situational based, which one do we use? So by we're just gonna leave it all by default um, for now, all the different trackers. Um, but we're, we're going to change a couple of other settings up here. So right here we have uh, how often we're going to track. So we're going to track the first one that we're at. And then are we going to track the next one or are we going to skip? So if, right now I'm just going to change this to two. So every other it's going to track. Um, this is perfectly fine for the motion in this shot. If you have very little motion, you could, you know, make that longer. That just is less frames to process. Um, if you have it one frame, it's going to take a lot longer than if you only have half the frames that you have to track. So it really is a fine balance between how much motion you have and how much accuracy do you really need? Because if you have a lot of motion, remember you only can track in this little box here. So if between, you know, if you have this set the three frames and let's say we were tracking this car in three frames in the future, if that car is outside this box, it's just gonna to try to find some the closest thing that was similar to whatever was previously tracked as that pattern. So then you're gonna have things skipping all around. So um, it's something that you know you can you can change and we can retrack if it's not working out for us. But for now we're just gonna leave it like that. Okay, so the other things that we can do is we can set up how in which that pattern and the tolerance. So I'm just gonna go into best match and we're just gonna uh, leave the tolerance at the default level. And we're just going to start tracking from here. So to start tracking, we have two forward and then we also have two that go in reverse. So quickly, this is to track from where the playhead currently is. So if there was a problem area and we need to come back to it, we'll be using that um, to just go to where we want and then readjust our tracker point and then we can start tracking from there. And then this will track from the beginning. So it doesn't matter where your playhead is, it'll just go to the beginning. So if you're working on like a really big project and you only have like one little screw up, um, you obviously wouldn't wanna click that and retract the whole thing again. You can use this button to just retract just that one portion. So let's have this go through and hopefully we have no issues. Well, hopefully we have issues because then I can show you guys how to, how to fix them, but hopefully we don't. Um, that means that we did good. Okay, so now that we have the points here, it'll be a little difficult to actually see it here. So we're just going to connect everything up and then actually look at the final image and see how that looks. So we currently have all the tracking data. All right, so now we have to connect the points to that tracking data. 
So to do that, we're just going to highlight both of these or the tracker and the paint node. And we're just going to make sure that we click on the paint node to open it up. Now, this is kind of weird and it's really only this node because of how this node works, but we have our points here and the only way to add an expression, we have to go over into the modifier. So if I was to right click open expression, we don't see it here, right? You have to come over into modifiers and then on that particular stroke that we're working on, we'll, we'll have the expression here. It's kind of weird and hopefully follow, but we'll just always be, so let's say we uh, have that closed, just go over into modifiers. So we're currently on the paint node, go over to modifiers, make sure you're on the correct stroke, come down to our point, open expression, and then we have the expression here. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to highlight all of this, hit delete to erase it. And then we're going to click this little plus sign here. We're gonna hold it down. We're gonna go into tools. And now we're gonna scroll down to our other tool, which is the tracker. We're still holding it down. And now it doesn't matter which tracker that we're currently on. So currently the only one that was selected was tracker three, which is perfectly fine. I can show you how this works, but we're gonna to go to this track center um, for three, for tracker three. We're gonna release. Now, if we view this, let's come back. You'll see it's very weird because our point that's up here is actually now down here because that was the third tracking point. Because when we brought them in, it started with a tracker here, a tracker here, a tracker here, a tracker here. So it was one, two, three, four. Um, it's really easy to figure out once you, you know, can connect the dots here. So we're gonna come back into our paint here. And there's also another thing here that's weird. And I left the names by default just to explain this later on, but currently we have tracker one and then track center three. Now what this really means is this first half is the node name. And then the second half is the data within that node. So the first half here, tracker one, that was this actual, uh, node here, right? So what I'm actually going to do to make this a little easier to understand, I'm just going to change this. To change this, you would just click on the node and then hit F2, and then it'll open this rename up. And I'm just going to put in track data. So I'll just put that in and then it's right there. So now let's come back over to paint. And now we can see that it changed it here too. So the track center three is the tracker three. And if you don't remember which tracker was where, you can just click on the track and then you can see the actual names here. So tracker one, tracker two, tracker three, tracker four. So let's come back into our paint. So here we actually want it for the zero. So the points start off their numbering with zero, but the trackers start off with their numbering with one. So this is actually going to be uh, tracker one or that the center for one. And I'm just gonna copy this information and then come to point one. And this one, I'm just gonna double click to erase all of that. And this is gonna be two, and that's perfectly fine. And then this next one here, because it went one, two, three, four, but when we made this, it was one, two, three, four. These two are gonna be switched around. So I'm gonna come into here. I'm gonna make this four and then open this one up and make this, oops, and make this three. So we're just pasting it in there. And now we have um, our line here, but this thing is pretty thick. So I'm just going to make it a little thinner. So there we go. And now let's uh, play this through and see how it looks and see if it skips around at all. Normally when you have the tolerance enabled, it normally does pretty well. And it looks like it's doing perfectly fine. You know, it's staying on there. And it looks like there really wasn't any issue. But let's say there was issue. You would be able to just come into your track data and all of these little lines is where it did the, uh, the tracking information. So those are all keyframes for that tracking data. So all you would do is you would come to a point, right? And then you could just modify one of these so you can just click on it and modify it to however you want it to work right and then you would click this button and then it would track forward from that with that new so if i move this you know down here to this that would be the new point that it's going to start tracking at or that as the new pattern but um yeah so you would just move this to wherever your new point is have this go through 
And what has to happen here is when you move these around, not nothing's going to happen because these are just uh, locations to get uh, data from. When you actually run the tracker, then it makes the keyframes and the keyframe data itself is what uh, powers the paint uh, node. So if I was to move this over here, obviously we're not going to see anything change because this this uh, keyframe is still the same. It never moved, as you can see here. This is that where that keyframe is. If I zoom in, you can see these keyframes here. So hopefully that makes sense there. Um, so you would still, when you move it, you would still need to uh, run that tracker. Okay, so now that we have this done, there was a little bit of an animation that you've seen at the in that intro video. So what we're gonna do is, instead of just having this come on, because remember, this is in the middle of a shot so it would it would be playing 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 and then all of a sudden boom it's going to pop on and that doesn't really look that interesting so uh we're going to add in because this is a path we can do it right on and right off so um we're over here in our paint we're cl clicked on paint and we scroll down we have this right on right and if we look at it, if I bring this like halfway, what you'll see is it's only halfway. And we can move this and have it do a bunch of different animations, but we're just going to have it right on, and then later it's going to do the right off. So we're gonna start at the beginning. We're gonna to come to frame zero. I'm gonna keyframe it here. And then let's come in 15 frames or something, whatever you like. And then we're gonna to come to the end, and I'm just going to make a keyframe you know, towards the end and then come to the end here, and I'm gonna change the start. You could do it either way you want. If you do it this way, it's gonna make it look like it went backwards. If you do the start to the finish, it'll make it seem like it started on one way, and then it erased that, that going that same way. So it's up to you how you want that to work. So now I have it come on, and then let's just skip ahead, and then it comes off. Hello, there we go, and then it comes off. So that's kind of how you would do it it's not that difficult uh the more points you add the more uh complexity but complexity is just making sure that you add in the point data here um if you m mess up when you were creating these points each point is a unique name so let's say you created a couple of points but it didn't work right and then you got rid of those points and then you add it more points it's just going to change the it's going to always create new numbers um so it might not be you know 0 0.0123 it might be 15 16 17 18 19 or whatever it may be but it still should still follow you can figure out which point is which and then uh, connect it to that actual data here so each one of these you can click in and each one has a center but instead of going through all of these because i know how it works it's just track center two this one's track center one track center three track center four you just i just had to change that one number so that's where i was getting that information from okay so that's kind of it come over here and um we would have it animate on oh i forgot one other thing um if you wanted to you could add different uh you could add another element using that point data too so we, we could add in circles so let's actually do that so let's add in a background and grab an ellipse tool and we'll connect that up and then in the ellipse tool i'm just going to add an animate i'm just going to connect it to this just so we have a perfect circle and then there we go there's our perfect circle and i'm just going to connect this right into here and now we're just going to view this and where is our circle so there is our circle so i'm just going to make this a little smaller we can take these circles and add them to those points as well and use that same tracking data so let's just come back over to our paint and just grab one of these so let's grab this first one and if i come into my ellipse tool in the center here we can just open up this expression paste that there boom now we have a dot there and all we have to do is take this ellipse tool copy it Control c Control v two three let me just back this up just a little bit four and then i just take this data and i put a two on this one this one i put a three and then this one i put a four and then there you go. The only weird thing with this is at the beginning, 
you're just gonna have weird points and you could animate this as well you know you could change the level of how you know they come on and off so you could have it come on like or what I what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take all of this I'm gonna bring it up and on this particular merge, I have a blend, which I can blend them all. So what I'm gonna do is right here at the beginning, I'm just going to have it start at zero. Come this way, two frames, one, two frames, zero, two frames, one, two frames, zero, two frames, one. And now, there we go. Now it comes on. And I could do that same exact thing on the other end. So let's go zero, two frames on, two frames off, two frames on, two frames off, two frames on. There we go. And then when it's done, it goes off. So there we go. Now we added an extra animation using that same point data to build this out. I think that's kind of it for this one. I don't think I can add much more to it. It's pretty simple. You can just keep adding and adding and adding and adding to it. Once you get your head wrapped around how you can pass the data back and forth between one another to it, from one another, to, from one node to another. But yeah, that's kind of it for this one. Let me know what you guys think. If you have questions about DaVinci Resolve, you can always jump over to our Facebook group. Link is in the description. But with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching.